Lemon Amiga Brennan. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Once again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we're checking out Twin World Land of Vision. This was developed by Artec and Blue Byte and it was published by Ubisoft in 1989. Blue Byte was of course a German company famous for The Settlers in 1993 and you can see all of these guys are German coders and German developers. We also get a very nice image of that title screen and then we can press that fire button and move on to the main menu. that main menu we can see some preferences and they enable us to switch on and off the sound samples and the music and also to change between one and two player alternative mode and we can also check out the high scores as well and you can see various high scores I'm trying to beat my high score 13,000 on this particular run so let's press fire and let's check this game out Twin World, we are a character and he has various abilities and various sets of ammo and you can see at the bottom of the screen by pressing the space bar we can toggle the weapon and that will show us the ammo that we've got available and we can also pick up some more ammo as well and that will top up on the bottom of that screen. kill some of these enemies they will drop extra lives and you can see the lives meter tops up very gradually on the very right hand side of the screen and if you see any sacks lying around it's good to pick those up. And if you see any brown sacks they actually give us ammunition for the middle gun, the green one and the red gun that we've got at the moment fires green ammunition so it's a bit mysterious but all the colours are mixed around you can also find keys as well and the number of keys will start to pile up on that readout we've now got two keys at the moment and that enables us to get through these locked doors so let's collect the ammo before we do that and I like to use the red ammo and that fires high but it's also one of the weaker ammo as well and so if you want to get all the power ups and the extras and that's just a diamond that just gives us some bonuses you have to collect those so let's use up the key first of all one of our keys well, sometimes both of them it says all of our keys have somehow disappeared and now we've used that bonus area to collect some more goodies and it's totally possible to not collect enough keys unfortunately and that means it's a dead end scenario so none of these animals I don't think drop keys and if you waste keys on the wrong doors unfortunately that's a dead end you'll have to press escape and try the level again by pushing upwards we can move in and out of caves and this game is called Twin World because every world in the game has an upper level and a lower level Currently we're in the glade and also we find some caves as well and in the glade it starts us off pretty easily and we also have a time limit. You can see the dragon will also give us some bonuses and an extra life as well 
As long as we destroy that dragon quickly enough, there is always one dragon on every level. And by ducking down and pressing fire, we can destroy that. And this item here is a magic ring. You can see when we collect that, that will fill up the ring at the bottom of the screen. And that means once we've got the ring, we can now exit the level. You can see the doorway above us is actually the exit to the level. So only the last few things to kill now. And you might notice taking our time trying to kill these things. Sometimes they fall into the lava, so we can't collect them anyway. And sometimes these things only contain a bonus. But I'm trying to clear it anyway, using all the weaponry that I've got available. And doing that should hopefully mean that it's an easy time jumping off the lava. The time is also running out, so we'll have to rush towards the exit. just gives us enough time to rush to the exit on every single level. Now well, these levels really take it easy on the player so you'll have to know what to do and you'll have to know the level layout so that you can run straight towards items. You can see some items beneath us if we tap down twice on the controller that means that we can tap down to those hidden parts of the game and you can see collecting more ammo is a good idea to collect that wherever possible and don't wherever possible run straight into the lava because you can see that's just lost our chance to get an extra life and I think you can have 10 lives piled up on the right side of the screen it doesn't give us a numeric layout of that it just gives us a graphical representation so we'll have to watch out for that I think we've got nine lives at the moment and that's not too bad we'll definitely get plenty of them on these early levels see this bridge and if I tap here we should be able to collect all the extra ammo and sometimes we can jump over gaps but I'm using the cut through section here that takes us to the lower world where we can collect some more goodies and you can see we've no keys at the moment so we can't take this cut through section and it would have been a good idea to pick up that ammo whilst we were there and you can see that one well it's pretty difficult although it is possible to get through there so let's go in this direction and as long as we find the ring, which marks the end of each level, that should mean we can get through to the exit, and that's absolutely no problem at all. So you can see collecting extra goodies gives us extra score as well. We can even find extra springs, which gives us an extra high jump, and extra bonus collectibles like that. So at the moment, I'm just wandering around. Let's see what's in these birds. Second, ah, I see a spring, and that will mean as soon as we jump up, we'll get the extra high jump, which completely ruins the targeting system that I'm trying to use at the moment. And definitely, targeting with this weapon is a masterful effort. Yes, there's the ring, there it is. So, you have to learn how to target things, and I think, well. There you go, if we tap in under here, and you can see a plant there, or rather you can't, under that horse, that will kill us. And you have to watch out for those hidden plants from now on, because they are a menace. And you can see if we double jump now, just like the platformers on consoles, we can do a double jump now to reach higher platforms, because we have that spring. And again, I'm watching the doors that I need to walk through. And that should mean that I don't waste any keys. Some of these are wide open, and some of those you'll need a key to access them. So now I've cleared this area, I've still got the spring, and then this door should hopefully mean now that we've got the ring, we should hopefully mean that we can now move on towards the exit. And the extra time is very handy as well because definitely we need the extra time on these levels. And sometimes you can't actually lure guys out to be killed. And it's not so easy, but it is actually possible. So we've now got the ring, let's move on. It now gives us a bonus for the seconds remaining. And then we move on to now the third level of this first world, of which we'll be getting through two worlds ordinarily on this playthrough. And that's as far as I managed to get with the game. Now 
now it introduces us to some more hazards. First of all, the skull. If you collect that, you'll simply lose a life. And of course, the fire as well. I think you'll lose a life on that as well. So lives do come thick and fast, although you'll have to avoid things still. And some of these things can be hit pretty easily as long as you have the right weapon. So I employed the double jump tactic to jump over the head of that guy. And now we've got one key and another open cave. And do we double jump over onto this platform? And it's definitely possible. But in this case not. We can sometimes use the cave system to access the very same area going a different way. So let's go a different way. And yet again, one of those man-eating plants waiting to kill us and those difficult to spot so let's lob something towards that at a distance and it gives us a power up for our time and trouble most of these enemies at least the tall ones you can simply duck down whilst you're firing at them and some of them you can even jump up slightly and fire down towards them but if they touch us then that's an easier life wasted in the game so you can see the man-eating plants do try to snap towards us if we approach them and that's pretty difficult and sometimes you'll have to watch those enemy patterns so you can see a plant up there again let's use an appropriate weapon and some of these weapons we can even skip across the floor so we'll have to juggle the ammo but at this stage as long as we collect every single bit of ammo that we find hopefully we can top up as we go along <laughs> get used to timing puzzles and we exited that cave the lower one so of course the top one if you've got a key that is should take us to the exit and look at that we found the ring and so let's take the top exit and collect another key that's handy to remember because it means we can pick up the one that we've lost and we can't go through the exit until well we've killed that monster but also we'll need to go back and get the ring so let's get the full lives that means we've got the maximum lives now in this game and it won't take long to complete this level so yes you can run through these levels pretty smartly and if you jump up here and press the fire button you can actually shoot downwards towards that monster and it saves us getting killed and sometimes if you're brave you can kill most of the things on most of these levels so I'm just ignoring that particular exit and you can see if we follow the cave system all the way backwards it will take us back through the level towards the level that we've already completed and I've no idea why we're going all the way backwards at this point considering that we've already found the exit but you can do that it's given us plenty of extra time so let's just use the level layout to our advantage and you can see we can't well we can jump up there so we can go the above way or the below way through this particular world. Let's waste no more time, let's now exit and it's a great feeling to get through these quite short levels and to move on to the next one you can see we found what looks like a map piece and you'll be collecting those as you move through the game. Unfortunately, I don't think you can collect more than the allocation of lives, so if the enemies give us extra lives like this, we should be on 12 by now. But I don't think so, I think you can only collect the number that it shows in that meter, which is quite a lot. And at this stage, still, the game's sharing us with lives. And some of the comments about this game said that the graphics aren't amazingly well drawn for a 16-bit game, and they could have been drawn slightly better, and if you can imagine this drawn with console quality graphics, what sort of a game it would be, with maybe an extra layer of parallax in the background, and maybe some layers of parallax in the foreground as well. This game could have been immense, and the character is a bit chunky as well, with a huge massive head. So this game could have been drawn a bit better. And the music, it will change from level to level, 
and that is quite good, it's not massively memorable, but players do have great memories of this music, and the gameplay, well, it's a console quality platformer in every other regard, and if we duck down here and stand on this platform, hopefully we can shoot directly into this guy if we've got the right weapon, and that gives us another power up. And I'm not quite sure what that does, but we've now got the spring as well. And so we've got a key, so all of our power ups are piling up. And it means, look at that, huge great things, they bounce off the walls just like Turrican. And look at that, we've collected a flute. What does that mean? Well, if we press the H key, none other than the H key, not even enter, then that brings up a shopkeeper where we can buy extra goodies. Extra weapons, extra lives, extra springs, and extra keys. And definitely, if you can afford the extra keys, go for that because we'll need to start taking stock of those keys and acquiring a backlog of them in order to get through all of those later on. Definitely, if you've got any spur keys, it means that you're not going to get trapped on the level. And that's the good news, so definitely if you can afford those keys, all the better. And that extra power up I think gives us a huge big boost to firepower, and that will help us conserve that energy. So I'm just using one of the keys that I've got to unlock this section, which we needed to anyway I think. And there is an above way and a below way, which way do we go? and we could go through the cave, or we could carry on following the bonuses. If we fall for a certain height, we'll die, and that's precisely the height that we won't die from. If we fall any higher than that, we'll simply die, so that's definitely something to watch out for, although there is a power-up that we'll be collecting a little bit later on, gives us parachute power and that means we can fall from any height and again if we collect those parachutes it means that we've got a duration for them and so it means that we can acquire lots of them it looks like we've acquired lots of springs at the moment and they won't get used up until we do a high jump so you can see I've collected a full load of springs now and if we want to get to that platform below us well that's pretty difficult Looks like I'm trying to go the long way and killing all these enemies using these projectile weapons is unique almost to this game. It's pretty difficult and it reminds me of Lollipop and things like that. And we do get different weapons and power ups. So this game has got some good things going for it. It's not quite Turrican. So have we found the exit? No, not according to that. Well, yes we have found the exit, but we haven't found the ring. So, as I said before, we're going to go the below way here. If we can, and we can't, because that's such a big jump. So, if we fall down from here, we're going to die. So we have to get on that platform. And it would be a great thing if we could kill this enemy somehow. And that's possible. There you go. So finally we get across there and we get killed by a man-eating plant, so yes again, the humour in this game is fantastic and it is annoying but it's also quite funny as well. So let's get our third weapon out, which is the most powerful one, and drop as fast as we can things onto that and get an extra life for the dragon hopefully as well. Oh it looks like we've missed that, and if you let the head of the dragon alone that will go all the way to the end of the level. If you kill it, then it'll give us an extra life, but if it reaches the end of the level, it will fire fireballs at us when we get to the end of the level, and that's just an extra hazard for us to watch out for. So sometimes it can be fun if we leave those dragon heads around, and that will fire at the end. So here we go, this is the end of World War now. And that means that we've been playing it for almost 20 minutes, that means we've got through it. You can complete all of the five worlds in maybe an hour and 20 minutes if you know what to do. And at the end of each one it will give us a bonus section where we can simply collect lots of gems. And it isn't possible to collect every single gem, so the order in which you go through this bonus area is important. And there's also a dragon here, so let's get out our most powerful weapon. 
kill the dragon, we can use the high jump and the double jump to get those, but the time is very tight, so let's enter the final room and let's collect as many more as we can do, given that time, and collect an extra spring as well. So that's the bonus section over, and that means now we get to move on to the second area called the Dark Forest. As you would expect, the Dark Forest is full of trees, and this is split into an above way and a below way. And the below way is actually the ground level that you begin on, and the above way is actually the trees which we'll have to navigate around during this level. Through the controls, if you tap down twice, you'll do a kick, which reveals the underground sections of some bonuses. And if you press the escape key, that's a boy to life. If you press the space bar, that toggles the buttons. H calls the merchants for some reason. H. The Dell key returns us to the menu, and the P key pauses the game. At least five worlds in the game. We start off in the Glade, then the Dark Forest, and then we go through Blackthorn Town, with the underworld being Blackthorn River. Then we move on to the fourth world, the Swamp, and underneath the Swamp is the Gold Mines. And finally, the Temple is the fifth world, apparently the Temple of Molder, and maybe there's a final battle with him at the end. So, five different worlds, and you can hear different music now that we're on the second world, and that's very jolly to listen to. level will introduce us to something different and on this level we'll find owls who will dive bombers if you don't kill those and you can see the frogs remaining from a previous level so the monsters do upgrade from time to time and now we'll have to make use of jumps and some of those are quite pixel perfect and if you run out of ammo like that without even realizing it, it can be a difficult situation so with those things it's best to lob bullets over the swamp or the lava to kill it and that means that you don't have to jump into danger and jumping into danger usually means you're going to get killed it doesn't really matter at this stage because we've got so much energy anyway but later on you're going to find the lives do plummet and you don't actually have energy have lives so we could jump across and get that one but let's go the tree route instead and you'll find again those owls but also parachutes as well and that means we can fall from any height unfortunately if you don't collect those power-ups they will drop and once they're dropped on the floor that's it We didn't quite destroy the dragon, so the dragon head is waiting for us at the end of the level. That just gives us a bonus. And yes, we managed to find the ring. So that just means we find another map piece and we get to head on now to the second level in the Dire Forest. thing about the dark forest is if we can drop from the above world we'll land on the below world and so this is the only one of all the worlds in the game that actually does that and it reverses the mechanic and these dive bombing owls you'll learn the hard way to keep those arms length and some of these birds can even crash into us if we don't watch out so we'll have to watch the ammo or at least begin to watch that at this point and we'll have to watch also those man-eating plants, of course. Um, 
which which are also a hazard and those bonuses if you don't collect them straight away they'll disappear and POW I think that's a power up or oh, maybe that blows everything up on the screen and that's also smart bombs so that's very good but you can see a homing bird there so homing birds making the first appearance and I hate those things because it means you need to shoot them very quickly but if we stay here we can simply wait for that to home in on us that gives us an extra life so we're not short on lives at this point and the game's still encouraging us at every stage and we'll have to avoid all of these things which is instant death and spikes now we can see yes we can jump across that gap and that will reveal some bonuses and it's a pixel perfect jump do we even bother doing that? well once the enemies are dead they're dead so that's the good thing and we fell down so it's very difficult sometimes to judge those pixel perfect jumps luckily at this stage we don't have to go that way that's simply a bonus way as far as I know and we can even find power ups that give us ill vulnerability so if we can find invulnerability that's a good thing and if we can find power ups that's also a great thing but we must leave those alone and that means we've now died really you should be firing with the best weaponry to avoid those homing birds and look at that even the scenery will kill us and that's how you do it you collect that and that blows up all the rest so we're really moving through those lives now so we'll have to watch out for short bits of the scenery like gargoyles and some of these owls we can't avoid so we'll have to get prepared to lose a life on some of these sections. And now hopefully we've got the parachute, this is definitely the way to go, so let's take a running jump and hopefully we don't get stopped by an enemy and that's precisely what's happened that will take us back to the i think the last door that we managed to walk through and so we'll have to time that a bit better next time then you can see the enemies wander off if we can touch just the edge of that and blast into them then hopefully we can collect that extra life as well we're running short on lives we're down to our last five and so you can see by now that level two it is more difficult than the first one and it really introduces the player to the more technical aspects of the game you don't have to kill all of these enemies and that's good because you don't have the ammunition to kill every single one of them and returning back to the red ammo again definitely try to use that as a first priority and yep yeah, let's stockpile those keys we haven't seen too many of those flutes knocking around so we can't call the shopkeeper I think you can only buy one item from every shop and so it means that we can only buy the key once if you find that where it is so let's try to time this and again not get killed by the enemy luckily it's a nice tall enemy which means we should be able to get through it without dying that's the ring or at least the coin or whatever it is to the end of the level so all, all we need to do now is to work our way down towards it and that really should be killing that stupid plant there you go and that also gives us the extra time so how we get down there I've no idea and if we use this door unfortunately it's not a teleport and so we'll have to figure out the hard way how to get the ring point there is only one way back and maybe I can fall off here as well but how do you get there because well maybe there you go maybe there's a secret shortcut and trying to avoid this thing is difficult but it's the art in this game of thinking laterally yes it is possible to think laterally and to time it so that you kill these things and that's the fun part about this game you can pull off those tricks and those are necessary if you want to get far in the game. 
although it's nearly it's pretty difficult to press the fire button exactly the right spot we really should be doing it the easy way just like that and that means we get to collect an extra life we can't do anything from here except to fall off and maybe let's jump across the gap and risk everything I don't want to be colliding with the axe particularly and yet yeah, it's the end of the level and yet again we managed to leave the head alone so the dragon head's firing towards us and that's a nice touch now things really do become difficult and you'll have to keep a keen eye on all of this undergrowth otherwise you're gonna get killed Code for Twin World was coded by Thomas Hauser and he moved on to Tom and the Ghost in 1990 and he also worked on History Line as well for Blue Byte in 1992 and the graphics were Thorsten Knopp and he also worked on Tom and the Ghost which is an underrated game and it hasn't got a very good score but he moved on to the more popular Battle Isle, the graphics for that, and also History Line as well. That's invulnerability, and that makes this level very much easier. And the music that you can hear was also created by Michael Rutman, and he co-created the music for The Settlers, 1993 and also History Line in 1992 Twin World does have a great personality and it's surprising once you start playing this game you just want to see a bit further and you can see the next platforms and you've got limited ammo and limited time you have to keep going and so every time you play this game you'll get just a bit further and that's the type of platform game that encourages us at every step and that's fantastic and it also always, or at least it should do, always give us a way out and the graphics do get better as the game goes on not that we'll be seeing many of them and this is as far as I got because you can see the lies really disappearing on us now and I didn't even pick up the parachute but that's no problem because we already have quite a good parachute already Unfortunately we didn't destroy that thing quickly enough and it didn't give us an extra life, we definitely needed that at this point, so definitely crashing into enemies is also something to be avoided. So let's move on to those scores. The low score came from C Omega, who gave Twin World 74%, Lam Omega gave it 76, Zero gave it 78, Zap gave it 78. Mega Format gave Twin World 81% and Generation 4 gave it 90%, which means Twin World or Twin World gets 8 out of 10. I remember when I first started playing this game, I thought it was called Twin World because we'd change into a twin. And later on in the game you will actually grow a beard and that made me think that you were controlling the evil twin brother of this guy but it's actually marking the passage of time and that's very rare to see that happening in any game never mind an Amiga game and apparently Andrew Braybrook was supposed to be coding a game where a guy wandered around town and grew a long beard to mark the passage of time and that was part of the From Bedrooms to Billions the video game project which never actually happened 
and that was just an idea that was floating around and that would have been a great thing to do and get involved with but that unfortunately never happened but the Amiga you use is definitely up there and the Amiga use part 2 the Amiga 500 story is due to come out December 2022 so if that has come out already I hope you've seen it and if it hasn't come out already I hope you will see it so that is coming up on the horizon this is actually one of the last games that I'll be reviewing for this series so I've no idea when it's going to come out and so it might even come out next year in 2023 we played this in the Lemon Mega Games competition in 2022 in the spring of 2022 and that's where I recorded this game's footage from and this was my furthest try after playing this for three weeks solid and it's pretty daunting at the best of times and it's also pretty good so maybe not as hands-on brilliant as prehistoric or one of those other great platformers maybe Robocod and it's also got those hidden traps as well which are highly annoying to keep having to look out for every step but the difficulty curve I like and the progression route I like as well and sometimes this game is really fun and you can just get by onto the next level by the skin of your teeth, by the skin of your wits and by good fortune you can actually do it through your own skill and that's the platformers that I like can't get it exactly right when you press the fire button he'll appear to do nothing and so that's why I'm appearing to do nothing at this particular point luckily it was an easy way to kill those things and I'm surviving on my wits at the moment with one life now in the bank and no chance of really collecting anymore but we've found the rings at the end of the level and I think this is the final world in the forest I think every world's got four levels and this should be number four so if I time this correctly now we should be heading towards the end of that level and after this of course we'll move on to Blackthorn or Blackthorn Town which is a great town that you wander around and you can explore the river as well by going down and sinking through the river and it looks like we can hold our breath forever if we do that and that's fantastic unfortunately I never actually got to Blackthorn on any of my playthroughs and this is basically as far as I ever got with it so I do have massive respect for this game although not as massive as other platformers definitely Woody's World was a huge eye opener when we played that in the games competition in 2022 that's the first time I've ever played it and it's the first time I've ever played this as well I do have respect for this game and definitely juggling weapons when we don't have much ammo available is also pretty unique as well so persevering through let's hopefully collect some more ammo and looks like I'm having to use the most effective powerful ammo because that's all we've got left it looks like and we're down to eight shots with that so sometimes it's tricky to balance all the ammunition out and it's not always possible to collect more sometimes you have to ration it and that's why it's more of a thinking person's platformer so hopefully now we're moving towards the end of this level and timing things is pretty difficult and we don't really want to hang around this spot and we've just lost well we've still got another life left and it's pretty difficult to lure things onto the screen sometimes you can't even do that which is annoying at the end of the game you'll get a readout of all the shots that you fired and the hit rate that's 41 percent and i died 21 times so i must have collected quite a few lives on that level 
then gives us the opportunity to enter our name into that high score table. We got 19,075 on that run, and then it gives us the highest score table with IS at the end of. No idea what that means, but that's the highest high score that I managed to get in this game. And so, thank you for viewing this introductory guide to how to play it. And you can see Noah up there, and maybe that's Muldor or Moldor, whatever he's called, he appears if you die, and that then returns us back to the title menu. So thank you once again for viewing another Lemon Amiga play guide, and I hope there are some fans of this game out there, it certainly is a hidden classic. I'll see you again sometime soon. Thank you.